I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today is a dear friend with deep swimming roots. Today, we have an Olympic finalist, Pan American Games finalist, world champion, Brazilian national champion, and SEC champion back when we both swam at the University of Tennessee. And we should add that his roots are very deep in swimming. He's also a Bowles School alum. Today, we have the <laughs> today we have the co-founder and CEO of Outtex. Uh, Outtex underwater camera housing gives photographers and content creators the creative freedom to shoot wherever they want. Pause if you like right now and go over to Outtex.com. That's O-U-T-E-X.com. Drop in on them, check them out, come back to us. You can use promo code SWIMSWAM for 10% off your purchase. Uh, and also follow them on, on Instagram. They have a great channel on Instagram. They are real out text on IG. I follow them. You should follow them, buddy. Let's let's get down to it. How you doing? It's so cool to be on Swim Swim with you, Mel. It's kind of funny. We're all grown up now. We were swimming together, slugging it out, suffering in pain, doing way too much swimming. They, I think people swim less now. And now we're now we own businesses. We go way back. Uh, some of my fondest memories. You know, it's funny. Uh, I dug up this sweatshirt, which unlike me is in mint condition. And my kids remind me that it's vintage. They actually think it's cool. You know, sometimes they want to borrow it and use it. And they're like, oh, that's a cool vintage sweatshirt. All right, whatever. <laughs> well, so I, as I was doing the intro, you 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 did a reveal underneath your your Tennessee sweatshirt. And you got you got to show it to us one more time. There we go. That makes noise. Oh, you got your bowls. You got the bowls school. So you're representing both bowls and... Tennessee. I love That's that. right. You know, it is it is no coincidence that the Altex logo is orange. I have deep orange roots uh, that, that started at Bulls and then continued at the University of Tennessee. So, yeah. Now, now that we're older, we can get real serious and we, we can we can dive just just to give everybody a little bit of a teaser on the swimming. You know, back when I when I was swimming, it was I, I always felt like uh I, I was pretty good because my I didn't have a high IQ. I felt like I, you know, I, I had swim and I didn't think about things too much. You know, it, I could be wrong, but I always thought about you. I was like, JR is so smart. He's just so smart. I'm, I felt like you were always in your head and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like you were competing against everybody else. You were always competing against yourself. Was that, was that impression wrong or, or was I, was I on, was I spot on there? Well, that's very nice of you to say. Uh, here's what I will say about that. I think that uh, coming to the United States as an immigrant uh, forced me to mature uh, for sure ahead of my time. Uh, yeah. So some of it was by necessity that I had to, to find myself and sort of be in my own head uh, about things. Uh, but I was never, I, I never took swimming too seriously either in terms of letting it completely dominate my life. Uh, and, and unlike you, I think, you are, I think, a, a bigger student of the sport than I was. Uh, and, you know, coming here for me, it was just magical. And I was happy and uh, I enjoy the sport. I still swim. Uh, you know, I, I surf and I bike and I do other things, but it's always been something that I've been uh, happy in. Um, and so, you know, I try to, to balance it all out. There's, I think everybody has like this, this one moment in their career where they're like, that was perfect. That felt everything was just, you know, the whole experience was perfect. And it's usually not what people think it is. And, um, for me, it's like, it's, it's a tie between uh 200 flight and NC2A and Olympic trials. Like it was just like a perfect race and emotionally fulfilling, you know, what, what, what are your moments? What is it, you know, what, what, where would you hit it? And you're like, this is, I love, this is what I love. I have to say, you know, it's funny because my, my first memory is something that my parents uh, told me when I think I was 10 years old, it was my first state meet. And I didn't remember the story other than my parents telling me about it. And this kid walked up to me because we were both in the final heat, you know, it was just heat seated. And this kid was like, you know, well, I saw your time and it was whatever, you know, 108 and I'm a 107. And I said, well, that's what I'm seated, but I'm not sure what I'm going to swim today. And that was my, my, you know, come back to this kid. And my parents always told that story. 
But my personal sort of highlight was uh, when I came in third at NCAs, um, my, my childhood idol was Pablo Morales in The Butterfly. I actually carried his basket at the Justice Aquatic Center when he broke the world record at the uh, uh, Spain uh, World Trials. You were there. Um, we didn't know each other at the time. And I ended up competing uh, against him in 92, but at that year's NCAs, he had already finished his collegiate career. I came in third behind Anthony Nesty and Seth Pepper, you know, the Olympic world record and the American record, which is not too bad, I guess. And Pablo Morales came out to present the awards. Um, I was in lane eight going into the finals. JT was way more nervous than I was. Uh, I was sort of quietly confident, you know, and just kind of doing my thing, like you said. And I was just really thrilled and, and happy with, with a lot of the accomplishments and excited going into the Olympic year. You know, when I ask people who their favorite Olympian is, I can't tell you how often I hear Pablo Morales. He was just a, he was just a good human. He is a good human being. Really is. I, I met him, like I said, when I was, I think, 15, had just moved here and, um, you know, couldn't be nicer to me. And uh, every time I've ever met him, it was the same. Was the world record of 52-82 in the 100-meter fly at that time? Was that, that what it that was? That sounds right. Yeah, that sounds right. I think that was what it was. And, and it was like mind-boggling. And now, I remember leaving the sport for a very long time and then coming back. And I, I, I talked to, to uh, Bob Bowman. And I, was talk, I talked to Marsh. I'm like, how are they going so fast? He goes, they're just a lot stronger than you were. They turn over faster. <laughs> I was having a conversation with Greg Troy. Uh, he was here in Southern California where I live. And uh, Caleb Dressel was here. He was still coaching. Caleb preparing for Tokyo for the Olympics. I think it was right around the time the Olympics got delayed because of the pandemic or something like that. And we were talking about the same thing. I was just amazed at how much faster you know kids are. And on one hand, he said, yeah, there are there are things that are that are different. But but he said, you'd be surprised, you know, if you guys were still swimming, uh, there are a lot of things that I think you guys would still do well. And so a lot of the things that applied back then, I think, apply today. But I do feel like the number of dimensions that are trained are many, many more. You know, we for us, resting was recovery or you know, going to class was recovery, uh, let alone nutrition, massages, you know. And so I think that the the professionalism uh, of the sport, the sophistication of the sport has certainly come a long way. Uh, but there are a lot of things that are still uh, applicable, I think, uh, you know, regardless of time. Something tells me you were at Rolls, the Rosewell Aquatic Center. I am. I am. You can tell that from some of the images in the background, right? No, but just when, when you saw uh, Troy and, and Dressel, were they were they training there? Were they doing the training camp on location? It was a meet down in Mission Viejo. Oh. Got it. Got it. That's cool. Well, you, well, you should just mention, I, I, I don't know, are you still on the board at, at Rose Ball? I am. I was invited by John Neighbor, uh, whom I used to watch on TV, you know, doing the commentating. And but I'd never met him. Uh, we just happened to meet uh, at the Rose Bowl where he had been on the board, I think, since the beginning. I think he was one of the founding members. And we just struck up a friendship, a conversation. One thing led to another. And his wife, Carolyn, and, and my wife and I have become really good friends. And he invited me to join the board, which I've been doing for the last few years, which was fantastic. You know, he's a, he's a great guy, mentor to a lot of people. A lot of people probably know this big mentor to Rowdy Gaines because for many, many, many years, uh, John Neighbor was the voice of the sport in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we could sit here and talk about swimming all day, but you know, you, you're a grown man, you're an entrepreneur, you own a business, but you you had a, a, an entire other career, which is impressive. Before you launched Altex, can you can you share a little bit about that? Sure. In a nutshell, you know, after I decided to retire, so to speak, after my world championship, I, I went to grad school. Uh, and immediately got a job in high tech, which I've always been passionate about. I've always been kind of a techie guy. Uh, transferred to Silicon Valley, where I worked uh, at Philips Electronics. In st started in Tennessee, in fact. Uh, they had their headquarters for North America there. But I got moved to Palo Alto, where they had their development R&D and some of their higher tech 
uh, semiconductors and um, was the original product manager at TiVo. So I started the team pre-IPO, launched their first product, multiple platforms, put the, the hardware and the services team together, worked with the co-founders, uh, worked at Samsung. So I'd say that the first half of my career was in Silicon Valley and high tech and doing a lot of new product introduction. Uh, and then from there, I moved into entertainment. I was recruited by Disney, where I applied a lot of the high tech uh, into content distribution. So this was before iTunes and the iPod. In fact, some you know one of my friends who worked at Philips with me uh, ended up going to Apple to launch the iPod, and we we had worked on on similar products. And so we were sort of at the forefront of digital content distribution with Napster, with music. Eventually, you know, I, I launched a Disney mix, which was our foray into audio distribution. We did MP3s. So it was kind of a combination of high tech and content creation and content distribution. I've always been passionate about photography. So ever since, you know, uh, as a kid, Frankly, from, from my dad, uh, my dad had a passion for photography. My cousin and I came up with the idea for Altex out of our own necessity. I always carried a camera around and I was always around water, you know, whether it was swimming or surfing or water skiing. And I wanted to take pictures. I wanted to take the camera into environments where, you know, I, I could damage it. And my cousin, to his credit, came up with the original concept, uh, but we perfected it. I got our first patent, uh, hired an attorney, you know, did all that, that stuff and leveraged a lot of the know-how that I had from working in industry uh, into some of the things that we're doing. The company really started as a hobby. So, you know, we, it was sort of a nights and weekends, you know, in the garage, developing things. Uh, coming up with the idea, making things ourselves. And then after the patent, we decided to start selling it. Uh, so some of the photographers with whom we, you know, converse or exchange ideas and get feedback started saying, hey, you know, that, that thing is cool. I want one. Uh, so we decided to incorporate, incorporated in 2010. At the time I had left Disney and I was working at DreamWorks Animation, uh, a, a friend of mine from Disney that hired me into DreamWorks knew that I was doing, I actually told him, I was like, look, I've got this other thing going. Uh, he's like, totally cool. You know, I want you here. I want you to be part of the team and work with us. You can do it as needed, as long as it doesn't interfere. And uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg eventually sold DreamWorks to Comcast. I was under contract at the time, so it gave me a little bit of runway because I still had, you know, some some months of salary coming in, and I decided to go full time and never look back. So the company was born out of that, and we've been doing it ever since. It's hobnobbing with billionaires and Disney, DreamWorks, and I, I I knew some of the of some of your background, but this is like I've, the full time I've got the 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 full unpacking of it. But you've you've had a full life. You know, I've been fortunate. You know, I've tried to put myself, I think that there was a plaque at UT that said, uh, luck is where preparation meets opportunity. And uh, I've I've not forgotten that. You know, I try to always be prepared and try to follow my passion. That's the other thing that I've, I guess I've been lucky in that um, I found my way through things that I do enjoy so that I don't have to work. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, with what I've done, whether it was in high tech, in entertainment, I'm not saying that it's easy and that I haven't had, you know, obstacles and, and difficulties, you know, I've had a, plenty of challenges, but I've been able to uh, learn. I've, I've always had a lot of curiosity and uh, I've always tried to apply that curiosity towards building, you know, something, something better. Follow your passion. I always when I when I talk to swimmers, I always say, "Hey, you know, whatever you do after this, it's not going to be painful. It'll it might hurt in different ways, but it's never going to be quite as painful as swimming. Once you've once you've once you've gone through that gauntlet, 
you can do anything you really want to do if <clears throat> if you're curious enough. I, I agree. I agree. I think that there are a lot of parallels from sports in general. And I think in swimming, you know, we're such a wonderful community as a master swimmer. And from the background I just gave, you can imagine that I traveled quite a bit. The greatest, one of the greatest things about swimming, in my opinion, is that I can go to any city in the world. And within a couple of emails or phone calls, I can find someone to help me find either a place to swim or somebody to talk to. And it's just such a, such a wonderful community. Now we're really full circle. Now you're, you're, you're back in swim and, uh, you know, in, internally at, at swim swim, we're always looking for solutions. And, uh, we've always known that the, the DSLR and the, the bigger cameras, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. We always knew that we would come down to the smartphone. A lot of us use iPhones and that eventually that camera was going to be the camera for everything but it's going to be with how you outfit it and what you do. And, and I haven't found a great solution and it was pretty, let's just say I was happy to happy to learn from you. Whoa, this solution exists. And my, and your mind starts to run crazy because it feels like every swimmer that's out there now that is just, you know, they all have social accounts and they, they share what's going on. They need this. This, this, this is the, the, the Altex phone case is it. That, well, that's got to make you happy. I'm glad they like it. You know, obviously I'm biased, but I feel the same way. And it, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about. You know, when I started taking photographs um, and using the camera, I wanted something that I could take with me anywhere. So this is our camera Altex housing, for example, and I feel like it's the best of both worlds in that it combines a lot of the attributes from both ends of the spectrum. So for example, uh, on one end of the spectrum, you have hard cases, if you will. They tend to be very good uh, into specific uses, but they're heavy, they're bulky, they're expensive, they're in excess of $1,000. They usually start around 1500 bucks. And at the end of the day, uh, you're, you, you're still shooting through acrylic. So it's a bit like bike tires on a Ferrari sometimes. And on the other end of the spectrum, there are what I call bags. You know, it's kind of like a, everything from a Ziploc bag to other bags that are inexpensive, but you get what you pay for. And so what Altex does is it tries to combine the performance of being able to use any camera. So whether you're using a professional large body camera, uh, if you're using uh, you know, a, a more manageable uh, mirrorless camera, and also whether you're using large telezoom photo lenses, or if, even if you're using an, uh, a fisheye or a wide angle lens, the Altex uh, case accommodates all of that. So it was really well received in the market because of that, because of the performance, because of the affordability, because you can use any camera, any lens, you can just put it in and, and use all of the functions. The buttons are exactly where you expect them to be because with the hard cases, sometimes you don't get all the functionality. The buttons are in a different place. So there's a lot of new muscle memory as a swimmer, I think you can relate to that. So there are a lot of new muscle memory you have to learn. And with our case, it's a bit like a wetsuit and everything is where you expect it. You can change all of your settings. You can change equipment and go from there. And so over the years, um, as the phone has become both a professional tool and something that is in everyone's pocket, um, I knew that it was something that we would eventually have to address. And so our historical market had been professionals. It was very much a niche audience, uh, people that really knew their gear, you know, and, and took it seriously, took it to the next level, almost at a professional grade. And put that into context, because when you told me, I, I wasn't surprised because I, I interfaced with photographers and, you know, our photographer, Sun Swam has shot, you know, he shot the Weedy Box. Uh, they do a lot of commercial work, television work. You know, tell us about, your clientele and uh, cause it's kind of interesting. We have, and that's actually one of the, my favorite things um, on a day-to-day -day basis 
if you go to our Instagram page, which is Real Altex, um, you'll be able to see that we have quite an array of uses. And that's one of my favorite things about dealing with photographers is that we're working with National Geographic cinematographers that are doing whale studies to identify how climate change may be affecting their migration patterns. And we're dealing with moms shooting birthday parties in the backyard and literally everything in between. So whether it's the, the Holi Festival in India and people need to be lugging around their camera and getting paint thrown at, thrown at them, uh, whether it's underwater portraiture, uh, fashion, you know, color runs, triathlon, sports. Um, at the Tokyo Olympics alone, I think we had six different Altex photographers in Tokyo that either use our gear and, and we're using it there or use it in general from multiple countries. Um, we have uh, Brian from Ireland who used to be a triathlete, an Olympic triathlete turned photographer was at Tokyo, for example, photographing now multiple sports. He's an Altex customer. And there are other examples like that. Um, and so I, I really enjoy that. It gives us an opportunity to learn. Some of our patent portfolio is a result because we have multiple patents. And some of that is a direct result of that collaboration. So uh, when people have problems and when these professionals, uh, because our solution is so unique, when they come to us and say, have you thought about this? Or this is a problem that I can still not overcome. Can you help us? That's what we love because we, we, we like to innovate. And frankly, we sell to the armed forces. And I, I don't know a great deal of, of how they use it. But I do know from having presented and having met, for example, at Camp Pendleton with a lot of uh, uh, armed forces personnel, that they do really cool, you know, out of the box stuff. And, and that's the thrill for me, because again, it allows me to learn a lot because I'm learning from people that do one type of photography so that I can apply it in other types of photography. But it also lets me push the envelope in areas that, you know, things that people may have not done, like shooting in a cave at midnight, you know, in the water, in, on a deserted location. And so it, it sort of keeps me young. So if you're a swimmer or a coach, you're getting the resilience of a product that can be used by the military, but it's also a product that that was used to capture the last Olympic Games. That's what we're trying to do. We, we've tried to compensate um, for a lot of the shortcomings of the phone. And so we're really happy with, with the early feedback that we've gotten from people. And I know that you've, you've gotten yours, but it's a lot of the... Um, it's a lot of the same benefits. So number one, it's a universal fit. So you've got one housing, if you will, that works with a number of phones. So whether you're using an older version, iPhone or the iPhone 14, the Plus, the Max, a Google Pixel, a Samsung, all the different phones that you may have in your family, for example, can work with one case. So it's a universal case. But we've also taken the performance very seriously. So we use ports that are professional grade so that the outcome is going to be professional grade. And it allows you to control all aspects of the phone as well, both the hard buttons and the touchscreen. You know, from my perspective, I'm always thinking about promoting swimming and swim entertainment and sharing the narrative of swimming. So, you know, my, my heart starts pumping and I start thinking, wow, there's going to be a 13, 14 year old kid that, that can use this and capture the most amazing videos or photography. And you said, you know, you know, Mel, that, that, that is correct. And, and we love that and we support that, but you were very quick to say that it was a tool. This is a tool for coaches. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And that's, again, the cool thing about technology is that I think it's always pushing our behavior or letting us behave in ways that we may have not thought we were going to do. So the, the cool thing about it is that as a tool for a coach, it's wonderful because everybody's got, you know, you don't have to go buy an action cam. You don't have to download apps. Everyone's got a phone in their pocket. So with this case, regardless of the phone you have, you can use it. 
You can capture content. It's pretty quick to install, to put in and out. You can capture content. The coach can give you immediate feedback. And as the phones continue to get better, there are some pretty cool things that you can do like slow-mo, high def video, high frame rate video. And it lets you use it as a tool for water sports and swimming in particular in ways that are, you know, beyond what you and I were, were able to do. But a lot of people think that I'm tech savvy and I'm not. Um, my, my wife taught me how to email back in 1996 and I feel like she's taught me everything else or I've learned it with tutorials, but I do like the fact that you can just use this and, you know, whatever app you're using, whether, you know, whether it's Instagram or YouTube or, you know, it's Facebook, it's Twitter, it's, you know, whatever you do, it's, um, you just, you just put it on and go. Uh, I, I can, I, I'm somebody who gets very frustrated when I get, when I, when I buy a piece of hardware and I have to buy the app to fully realize the value of what I bought that drive that drives me insane. So I, yeah. I like, I like how fluid this is. Yeah. It's very portable, you know, it fits anywhere. And so it, it'll literally fit in a, in a shirt pocket or in your backpack. So you can have it at any time and you pull it out. Uh, so as a tool, you can ha just have it in your bag and use it. The coach uh, can use it at any time. The Rose Bowl coach here ended up, you know, using it almost every day. And then swimmers started purchasing it, uh, which was part of the reason that, frankly, I started chatting with you about talking to the swimming community about it because it is such a powerful tool. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, for swimmers from a swimmer, uh, which I think is cool. But it's also a cool toy. You know, you could, you know, you could use it at the beach. You could use it when you go boating, water skiing. So all of that flexibility is still there and it can still be used as a toy. It's affordable, um, but it's also like the rest of our system modular. So whether you tear the cover or if you break the, the port or if you need to replace or if you need to add accessories, everything is modular and you can mix and match and you can add as you go. So you can get the kit up front, have everything you need. But if later on you want to add a tripod mount or if you want to put it on a selfie stick or if you want to add lighting, the product is fully compatible. If you want to use domes, all of that stuff is stuff that you can add as you go. It's that's I, I go through periods where I don't swim and I do other things and then I get back in the pool and I cycle in and out. I'm not as disciplined as you, but uh, I'm back on my swim cycle and uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm afraid to see what I look like. <laughs> you just shoot other people. It'll be fine. You just shoot other people. Just shoot other people. Yeah. That, I think you're right. I think that, I think that's a smart way to go. It's uh, well, listen, guys, if you're out there, it's it, outtex.com. O U T E X.com. Swim swam is the promo code for 10% off. And you can follow Outtex on Real Outtex on Instagram. You got to do this. I think that once you get it, when when people actually go to your account and start start thumbing through those images, you're, they're going to be like, "Wow, I can do this too." And um, I feel like that your Instagram channel just tells people exactly what they need to know. But I, I'm I'm excited for the future because I want to see swimmers use this. Yeah, I think it's really exciting because the the phones will continue to get better. Um, and frankly, a lot of the professionals that I cater to were a catalyst to our developing this product. You know, I knew that it would be an opportunity, but I started to realize that more and more professionals were making the phone part of their workflow. So they, they may just have a particular scene or a, a place that they capture that ends up making it into their reel. Uh, but that technology will continue to get better and better. And simplicity, quite frankly, takes a lot of work. So again, to use a swimming analogy, you know, you may watch a Jordan Crooks or a Caleb Dressel uh, swimming a 50 free and say, oh, well, that looked easy or it looks simple, but there's a lot of work that goes behind it, right? And, and people don't always see that. And so there's a lot of chemistry and engineering that has gone into making the touch screen still sensitive and responsive through the housing material, for example, 
uh, the elasticity and flexibility, uh, the different compositions at different parts of the case so that it's thick where it needs to be, it's thin where it needs to be, it has a certain veracity where it needs to be and so on. So there's a lot of engineering that goes through both from the optics standpoint to make sure that the uh, imaging is going to look great, but also that the cover, as you mentioned earlier, is rugged, but is also tactile rich. So it gives you some feedback. It gives you the sensitivity that you need so that you can use all the buttons and, and that kind of stuff um, is the, the kind of work that we've uh, put into it. So you, 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 some people are going to fear, you know, taking so much technology and and getting into a wet space. There, there's going to have to be some trust built. They're going to go slowly. I mean, maybe not. Maybe not everybody. Um, I I am because when it comes to technology, I'm super careful. Um, does the does the, the cover help it float? It does. It does. That's actually one of the benefits. So we've engineered uh, the the product comes with a wrist lanyard uh, to begin with to make it extra safe, even so, so that you don't drop it, but it does help flow. So the trapped air inside, even with our cameras, will make it flow. Uh, but we also make it so that you have a place to attach, whether it's the lanyard, or if you wanna do, for example, an open water swim, I've actually done a longer uh, leash that I can just put it on my back and swim, or if I can put it on my chest and swim backstroke, so again, depending on your use, there are a number of third-party applications and, and products that you can go out and get and use with it. But the, the, uh, re the reducing of its sinking is actually one of its benefits. And you can control it a little bit. So some of the heavier phones may still sink, like if you're using a Pro a Max or you know the Ultra, which are the much larger phones and heavier phones, they may still sink. But some of the lighter phones will just float. Years ago, when everybody started using GoPro, and I was going to use GoPro after this because they can just use their phone. Um, years ago, I I sent my GoPro off and paid fifteen hundred bucks to get a lens to a corrective lens, and uh, you know it it took like six weeks to send it off, get it back, and it was great. It was better than than every than everyone's. Uh, consumer model I had, a, I had a you know i had a great I had a great gopro with it with this massive lens that popped up on it um yeah i mean you you got you you designed this stuff for national geographic what's uh and the olympics what's you know it's is there do, do you do something with a dome is there a corrective you know for for aberrations underwater we do. So we have, obviously, for the professional cameras, we have a couple of different uh, optical glass domes that we sell. So this is a good example. And what the domes help do in a nutshell is they correct for aberrations that occur underwater as light travels at a different speed on air versus water. So if you put a pencil in a glass of water, for example, you'll notice that the pencil looks broken. Light is traveling at a different speed and your eye perceives that difference. So the domes help correct for that aberration. Like most things, it's on a scale and it's on a curve. It's not necessarily a linear thing. And so what we've done because of our modularity, we've also created a phone dome so we have this as a modular accessory. So you can get it as a kit or you can add it later if you like. Uh, it also helps for your underwater photography. And one of the cool things about the dome as well is that it lets you use third-party lenses inside of it. So as many people know, there are third-party lenses. You know, as the phones continue to get better, you may notice that different phones will have different number of cameras on it, right? So like some of the Samsung phones have four lenses. The iPhone Pro now has three, uh, not to count the lens in front. And so again, there, there are a number of applications and we're, we've built something to accommodate a lot of that modularity and to uh, maximize it. And so with the dome, you can even use some of those lens ports inside and take it underwater. That's cool. 
And that matters. It's going to matter to a lot of people. When I think about when I think about content creators specifically who are so serious about what they do, uh, yeah, that matters. Um, hey, let's let's get down to the nitty gritty. Where can I buy this? So Altex.com is a one stop shop. So we sell worldwide. We have three distribution centers, if you will, uh, in North America. So in in the U.S. here in SoCal, in Brazil and in Portugal. From there, we ship worldwide. So depending on where you order, you know, we may use a different distribution center so that it gets to you in the most efficient way. But uh, Altex.com has dedicated frequently asked questions. It has a very rich user community. It has links to our YouTube channel, our Instagram feed. And again, you can look at reviews and you know, questions from other people, lots of examples from other people. So you can get all of your questions answered and you can shop there and order yours and uh, apply the swim, swim, swam, 10% off code and be on your way. I'm so happy for you. This is so cool. If you had asked me years ago, you know, would, uh, will J.R. D'Souza be doing this? Will he own a business and be doing this? You know what I would say? I'd probably say, yeah, that makes sense. That checks well, out. I, I appreciate that. Like I said, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't believe really in fate, uh, but I do believe in hard work and, you know, following your, your passion. And uh, I, I couldn't have dreamed that either. You know, often my daughter is about to graduate. My oldest daughter is about to graduate from college. And I always joke that I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I just think it's important to sort of work hard and, and pursue things that you're passionate about. And, and often those two things, uh, you know, yield good things. So I'm hoping that people's, you know, the, the preliminary feedback on the product has been great. Uh, obviously it's a, it's a much bigger market. And so I'm excited and terrified at the same time about, uh, what, what it may bring, but I'm super excited. I think, you know, that the swimming community is a perfect, uh, testing ground for it and a perfect place for, for people that are looking for a solution like this. And so I'm thrilled to be talking to, to you and your audience and, you know, uh, hopefully this will rekindle some, some friendships and, 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 and bring some, uh, old connections with people that I've not talked to, but I've really enjoyed it. Co-founder and CEO, Outtex, Olympian, world champion. And as we know from this podcast, uh, third at NC2As, where he saw Pablo Morales and received his award all over again. Um, it's been a good time talking to you, buddy. Do you have any parting thoughts? No, I've really enjoyed the chat. Uh, it's great chatting with you. It's great to see the success that Swim Swam is having. And uh, hopefully we'll get together in person soon next time you're in SoCal.